we ready? Good. Over the past one month, Kenya's credentials as a democratic nation have been severely tested. During this time, the country has engaged in a difficult public conversation, providing an opportunity to reflect deeply on the relationship between fundamental rights and democratic freedoms, our collective aspirations for prosperity, and efforts to secure opportunities for all, and the imperative to advance national sovereignty and the security of the state. In this discourse, the people of Kenya have expressed their views on governance, development, economic management, national finances, and many other aspects of our nationhood. It is of utmost importance that the government takes measures to affirm our commitment to actualizing the people's aspirations, assure citizens that the state exists to serve them efficiently and with integrity, and to signal to all that our national values and principles of governance are the foundation of our national dispensation. The issues that have come to the fore requiring expeditious attention as matters of urgent priority include an accelerated program to significantly increase our food production and agricultural sector development in addition to the interventions that we already have so as to reduce the cost of living and enhance food security in our country. And together with it, to provide requisite raw materials for our agro, our value addition, our manufacturing, and our industrialization agenda. The need to expand existing job creation opportunities and programs and to create new interventions to address unemployment in order to absorb thousands of unemployed young people and provide them with gainful employment opportunities. The necessity of a public conversation on innovative, prudent, transparent, and accountable use of public resources, along with people-friendly mechanisms for domestic resource mobilization and reducing public expenditure in a manner to make sure that we live within our means. Number four, the imperative of addressing the significant challenge of public debt by establishing and implementing very clear mechanisms to reduce public borrowing and insulate the country from risks associated with debt accumulation, including prudent financial management to avoid debt distress. The importance of constituting a more inclusive government that unlocks the potential of citizens from all sectors to drive our national transformation and our unity. I gave the nation my undertaking to reflect at length on these issues that have been brought into sharp focus by the people of Kenya. I also promised to consult widely on the way forward, and I also promised to craft a broad-based government that would harness the enormous potential in our country to turbocharge our economic transformation and to provide for inclusive growth. While the events of the past one month have caused tremendous anxiety, concern, and uncertainty, the crisis has presented us with a greater opportunity as a nation to craft a broad-based, 
an inclusive citizen coalition for national transformation and progress made up of all Kenyans from all walks of life. It cannot be denied that our nation has been in a crisis caused by multiple and complex factors. Neither can we turn away from recognizing that the opportunity before us is greater than the crisis. Together, we have a chance to take our country where we all want it to be and make our nation, the Kenya we want, a great nation. For this reason, I have consulted extensively on one, the need to enhance, broaden, and deepen the National Economic Turnaround Plan set out in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda to incorporate a wider range of ideas, programs, and interventions that will facilitate job creation, robust debt management, enhance transparency and accountability in the use of public resources, and enhance domestic resource mobilization and optimize public expenditure in a manner that gives all of us a chance to live within our means. Consequently, I have started the process of forming a new broad-based cabinet to assist in driving the urgently needed and irreversible transformation of our country. I nominate the following first batch of 11 individuals for consideration and approval by the National Assembly for appointment as cabinet secretaries and attorney general. Ministry of Interior and National Administration, Professor Keture Kendiki. Ministry of Health, Dr. Deborah Molongo Baraza. Ministry of Lands, Public Works, Housing, and Urban Development, Alice Wahome. Ministry of Education, Julius Migosi Ogamba. Ministry of Defense, Arden Bare Duale. Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, Dr. Andrew Muihia Karanja. Ministry of Environment, Climate Change and Forestry, Roslinda Soipan Tuya. Ministry of Water, Sanitation and Irrigation, Eric Murithi Muga. Ministry of Roads and Transport, Davis Chircher. Ministry of Information, Communication, and Digital Economy, Dr. Margaret Nyambura Ndumu. Attorney General, Rebecca Miano. I am continuing to undertake consultations across the political divide on the balance of cabinet that I will appoint shortly. The consultations are at an advanced stage and internal processes in various sectors are underway to facilitate my appointment of the balance of this cabinet. Additionally, I will be issuing next week a clear roadmap on the assignment that the new cabinet is going to have with clear timelines and deliverables for us to harness the tremendous potential that exists in our nation and drive our country to greatness. Thank you very much, and God bless you.